Hi class, here's a lecture I promised you in support of chapter 16, that tough chapter about rhythm in poetry. And I decided to scan for you the poem Desert Places by Robert Frost because Megan wrote about it in her journal and liked it. Um, but she noted that right in the middle it changes from happy upbeat to sad uh, downbeat, negative. Um, and I think the meter uh, and the rhythm are a, a main one of the main reasons that happens. Now to follow along with this lecture, I'd like you to open a document called Scanning Desert Places. I posted it in week 10 um, in, in learning content. So open that. And there's also a document with definitions that I use in the lecture, which you can open if you want to or look at it later. Um, just so that you the language becomes more familiar to you. When you write about rhythm in your exposition paper um, or in your last paper, which includes poetry too, you can use the language from the chapter and from the lecture. Um, rather than saying stressed, unstressed, uh, we can say um, trochee because that's what it is. Or we can say this is an I am uh, rather than saying this is an unstressed, stressed foot. And a foot is just a stress along with any unstressed syllables that might go with it, usually one or two. So we got dactyls, we got iams, we got trochees, we got spondees. Those are all Greek terms. But I'm not going to test you on that. You don't have to know it. We can all hear the rhythm in poetry. And as I said, uh, I think in the forum, uh, English is naturally iambic. I went to the store and bought some bread. So when you change that up, people notice it. The reader notices it and hears it, and that affects the mood. The mood, even if they're not thinking, oh, gee, that wasn't I an I am. That was dactylic. Um, they're still going to feel it. Now, now, this poem, when I first read it a long time ago, uh, the beginning really hit me. Snow falling and night falling fast, oh fast. It's not I am's. It starts with a stress. Instead of going unstressed, stressed, it goes stressed, unstressed. Snow falling and night falling fast, oh fast. So the, <clears throat> the words that get emphasized in that line are snow, night, fast, and once again, fast. Within between the two fasts, we have, oh, fast, oh, fast. So it's a nice, pretty view, but also there's a foreshadowing of something ominous. There's kind of a mood of, uh, you know, uh, uneasiness in the speaker. Snow falling and night falling fast, oh, fast. So we got those four beats. Then we got, in a field I looked into going past. That sounds milder to me. Um, we have what's called an anapest, which is too unstressed and a stressed. In a field, <laughs> in a field, and then another anapest, I looked into, and that too there's, I don't know what that is, it's just kind of stuck on. If you look at my lecture, I put a little plus there because I'm not sure what to call it, but it sounds like an anapest. In a field, I looked into going past. Going is a trochee stressed, unstressed. And then that past, I think, is there alone. It's a single stressed foot, sounds to me like. Um, and then the next line is, the meter is exactly the same as the second line. And the ground almost covered smooth in snow. And if you look at my lecture, you can see the stresses are all bold. So in a field and the ground are stressed just the same. And then we have the last line of the stanza, uh, starts with another anapest, but a few, and then it switches back to the trochee, like going, but a few weeds and stubble showing last. So those trochees emphasize the word, the words weeds and stubble. And it's neat that the line kind of has them showing up through the meter, through the rhythm, uh, just like they're showing up through the snow but a few weeds and stubble showing last. Second stanza. The woods around it have it, it is theirs. All animals are sheltered in their lairs, but I am too absent-spirited to count. The loneliness includes me unawares. And that last line where loneliness comes in, that's where Megan said the, the poem started to shift from happy to sad. Um, and I'm just going to want to 
click off something here. Um, and let's just look at the meter and see how it does that. The woods around it have it. It is theirs. Um, all animals are smothered in their lairs. And notice animals is the first three-syllable word that we've had so far. I am too absent-spirited. Then we get another three-syllable word to count. The loneliness includes me unawares. So we have the emphasis on woods, um, smothered, too absent-spirited to count. I think I'm missing a, a line there. Um, well, I'll put it in later. Uh, and then we have the emphasis on alone. He's alone here. He's he's riding a carriage, a horse-drawn carriage in New Hampshire. It's the 1930s, and he's looking out at a field at dusk. And maybe he's just glancing as he goes past, past but he's getting a feeling of loneliness. The loneliness includes me unawares. Not just that he's lonely, the whole field, the dark, it's it's lo it's a lonely place and a lonely time of the day and it includes him because he's in it he's in the field he's in the day but it includes him unawares it's not even thinking of him the field doesn't know he's there looking at it the loneliness includes me unawares and that line, I read it straight iambic, four iambics, four iambic feet. The loneliness includes me unawares, very regular. And the next line, same thing. It's almost like he's lulling us uh, to be peaceful and happy before something hits. And lonely as it is, that loneliness, so lone gets emphasized again. Three times now, which is why this is where Megan is feeling, oh, this poem feels a little sad. And lonely as it is, that loneliness will be more lonely ere it will be less. And in that second line of the third stanza, the rhythm changes. We have Anapest, will be more, which is too unstressed and stressed. It goes faster, will be more. And it sounds to me like the line rushes to that more. And lonely as it is, that loneliness will be more lonely. And then we get a trochee, not the usual I am, will be more lonely. And will be more lonely ere it will be less. So we got Anapest, trochee, trochee, trochee. And then a lone stress, like fast at the beginning, less. I, I hear that as a lone. And it's almost like that second line is saying, there is no comfort. The I am's were comforting, but will be more lonely air. It will be less. And notice how at the end of the second stanza, loneliness, the lone, that's an I am, and it gives the lone a stress, the loneliness. And then even though it switches to a trochee, stressed, unstressed, in the third stanza, lone is still emphasized, is still stressed. Will be more lonely ere it will be less. And now look what happens. A blanker whiteness of benighted snow with no expression, nothing to express. It's almost Edgar Allan Poe-ish there. And I just want to stop and talk about the word benighted. That is our... That is another three-syllable word, and we have in, in this poem four three-syllable words. Everything else is very simple, one- and two-syllable words. Spirited, loneliness, animals benighted. Now, um, notice the first three there have, they go stress, unstress, stressed. Spirited, loneliness, animals. They all have the same rhythm, except for benighted. Benighted. And it's a more unusual word. You probably haven't heard that word a, a lot. You can kind of tell what it means. Something, you know, the field is turning suddenly to night. Benighted. Spirited, loneliness, animals, benighted has the stress in the middle of the word. It's just different from the rest. So it gets emphasized. Night. Lone snow, night from the beginning. The word night gets emphasized, and he's probably feeling that. He's riding his, his horse home, um, and it's it's snowing, and night is falling. It's a little, you know, wolves. It's a little dangerous and scary. Um, it makes me think of another uh, poem of his, who, um, whose fields are these, I think is no, I know. His house is in the village, though. 
He will not see me stopping here to watch his field fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer that I've stopped. You know, so from, from other poems I've read by Frost, I can kind of know a little bit about his, his life, you know, that he used a horse. He got around with a horse for in, in his youth, you know, at this time in the 30s. Anyway, so a blanker whiteness of benighted snow with no expression, nothing to express. We go back to I am, I am, I am after that really strong third line of blanker whiteness. Now let's go on to the last stanza. They cannot scare me with their empty spaces between stars on stars where no human race is. I have it in me so much nearer home to scare myself with my own desert places. Now look what happens in that first line. They cannot, I'm kind of not reading the they again, the, the, the they and sometimes an ah uh at the beginning of a line seems to me not to have any stress, either unstressed or stressed. So I'm, I'm really, I feel like the line starts with um, cannot, which is a trochee, cannot scare me, it, which is either a trochee, stressed, unstressed, or it might be a spondy, that one I was talking about, oh, I was talking about that in a different version of this lecture. <laughs> I did a bunch of versions. But a spondy is um, a foot that has two stresses. It's pretty rare. Uh, scare me. And I, I, I hear that as a, a scare me as a spondy, that scare and me are stressed. They cannot scare me with their empty spaces, trochee, trochee, empty spaces. Um, just like the beginning of the poem, snowfall, nightfall, empty spaces. And that with there, I put it in lighter ink um, and a question mark over on the other side because I'm not sure how to read it. They cannot scare me with their, it just goes really fast, with their empty spaces. See, when you have a stress syllable, it slows down the line. And when you have an unstressed, it speeds it up. So when you have two unstressed together or three or four, um, it makes the, it speeds up how fast you say it. They cannot scare me with their empty spaces between stars. I think that's a spondy too. Between stars, on stars, I am where no human races, trochee, trochee, empty spaces, human races. And I kind of read it. I read race is as a spondy, but that's arguable. Empty spaces, human races. Um, I have it in me so much nearer home to scare myself with my own desert places. And I would say trochees are the most important type of foot in this poem. Um, we open with the dactyls, which are a lot like a trochee because they start with the stress, snow falling, night falling, fast, oh, fast. And then we have um, empty spaces and desert places. We end with two trochees. And the, the title of the poem, Desert Places, is a pair of trochees instead of the more usual I ams. Um, and Megan pointed out that she, or she wondered about the title. Why have that title? Because we're talking about winter and and a snowy field, and deserts don't have snowy fields. And I think partly the poet Robert Frost liked the sound of desert places because they're both two trochees, and they had that desert places, that double stress at the beginning of the word, which makes them scarier. And I have another theory about that, which I put in the um, in this page of notes down below. Okay. So there's a quick lesson on how the rhythm of the poem uh, creates the mood and the meaning of the poem. Um, okay, so uh, thank you for waiting for this, and I hope you can use it in your exposition paper that we're turning in at the end of the week, or perhaps in the cultural analysis, the very last paper, which includes all three genres, fiction, poetry, at least one poem, and uh, a play. Okay, so um, if you pick a poem that is um, uh, um, a closed form, as our as our book describes it, uh, chapter um, seventeen. If it's a closed form, it, probably the author thought about the rhythm and the meter, and it'd be good to scan it and talk about it. And if it's an open form, it's probably mainly iambic. Uh, and the, the author probably didn't program in the rhythm and the meter so much, you know, so you wouldn't want to use it. 
Um, okay, thank you uh, for waiting for this. And sorry, I had technical troubles and I discovered a way to put pictures in and I did that and then, but it didn't work um, well enough this time. So thanks for waiting for this. And I look forward to reading your exposition papers at the end of the week, starting at the end of the week. Okay, take care.